Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Graded Gem. If uh, you didn't predict that one, maybe you don't know about it yet. We'll go through the, the details here real quick. They used to be a middleman service for PSA, so you'd send your cards to them. They would send them to PSA in a bulk submission. A shipment from them to PSA got lost. Their customers are not getting a full refund for the lost cards. Um, they're mad about that and the fact that they weren't informed at the time. Um, so, I mean, if this was me, I would be pretty upset, um, especially after what we look at here. Um, I guess more than anything, let this be a lesson to everyone who's handling cards for other people. You have to absolutely prepare for the worst, and it seems like there was either no preparation done or the bare minimum, and it came back to bite them in the ass. I don't know. I don't think they had any bad intentions necessarily. Maybe they were more careless than anything else. But you you can't you can't mess around with this stuff. It's it's the same thing with if you're making purchases, make sure you protect yourself. Make sure the item's insured. Make sure you pay uh, someone that you don't know in a method that is going to allow you to get your money back if you get scammed. Put these steps in place. If you don't you had to be ready to get burned for that amount of money. It's just how it works. So, um, I don't, I, I can't really tell here if they either put the wrong insurance uh, or were just underinsured in general, uh, whether that was a conscious decision by them or not. Who knows? Um, I guess they'd probably be the only ones that would be able to tell you. Other than that, maybe the insurance company, which I'm sure for legal reasons cannot uh, disclose that information. Um, other than that, where, like, why do you not have some sort of emergency fund in case something isn't fully covered or if the process takes too long to save face with your customer base? You have to have funds on hand in order to, to run something like this. You can't just you know rely on the customer paying for the entirety of it. Um, and having no float at all because something bad can happen. I mean, something worse could have happened. It could have been a bigger order or it could have been absolutely everything in the case of a fire or anything like that. What do you do then uh, if everything is gone? If there's multiple submissions, if there's you know an amount of money in cardboard that you can't replace, you're in big trouble. So you gotta you gotta take all this stuff into consideration. You, you can't just pop up a tent and take, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars from people, uh, whether it be in collectible form or monetary form, and not have an absolutely solid plan in order, you know, to replace or uh, reimburse people if something bad happens, you know, like a package getting lost, for example. Um, I... There's no excuse. This should uh, should have been a non-issue. I mean, worst case, people are upset that they lose their cards, but at least if they get that full monetary value in return, um, then you can make it right to them, at least to the best of your ability. What I'm seeing here is not that. This is kind of a cop-out. Um, it's unfortunate for the people that submit because who do you who do you even trust with your cards if you can't have someone... Um, probably one of the bigger names, uh, middle manning for you. And they can't guarantee that your stuff even gets to PSA. So I don't know if it was on the customer, I can see, yeah, maybe they didn't insure their package. That would have been on them, but you received the items. You were submitting the items. You were the last person to send the items. Let's, uh, let's take a look through. So we'll first look at the latest statement by a graded gem. On, uh, on Facebook, and I don't know if they privated the, the group. It seems like they might have, because if I open this in a new window, I can't see it anymore. So we're going to read through. Um, we're going to get their take on it, and then we're going to look at some of the angry customers, what they've said, what their, what their claims are. So buckle up. Greater Gem says, Hey everyone, some of you may have seen that unfortunately a package sent to PSA with raw card submissions was declared lost by FedEx in mid-April 2021. Firstly, I would like to clarify, however, that any submitter still getting update emails for their submission is unaffected. 
This only affected standard Feb 21 orders. I would like to say sorry for the delay in communication from Greater Gem to all submitters involved. Over the past eight months, we have been battling with our broker, our underwriter, and the insurance provider to make a payment for the submission, and it has been an uphill struggle to get the insurance to make any contribution as they claimed Greater Gem to be a bailey on legal grounds of ownership and responsibility. We finally reached a partial settlement within the past month, which Greater Gem topped up to our total original claim value. After careful consideration, Greater Gem has decided to put an extra 10% of the claim values as a gratuity. So, I mean, clearly you see that um, you're trying to make up for it or you're seeing that you're to blame for this and responsible for it. That extra 10%, as we're going to see, is not going to help in some cases. Sure, uh, it's better that you have a, a small portion of it coming out of your own pocket. But at the same time, I don't know. From what I see, I think in order to make it right, you need to reimburse the full difference. Whether or not, whether or not that's something that can be done uh, is a different story. Uh, if you just don't have the funds in general, then yeah, obviously it's not an option. But um, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that's not doing it in terms of uh, making it up to the customer that has lost you know potentially thousands of dollars. 10% is uh, not it. The insurance values given are made from raw cards and median sold listings of individual cards from eBay dating back to April 2021. The insurance company needed a way to calculate the claim as a whole, and basically they questioned the authenticity of all values not mentioned on a public-facing marketplace. I understand it is a shock for all submitters involved, but I would like to say we pushed and used every persuasive argument we could to get your claim values as high as possible, but due to the difficulty in valuing raw cards, the above calculation was agreed upon between us and the insurance company to move the claim forward. So this is another thing. If you're accepting the claims, if you're accepting submissions, you also need to have something in place prior to, just in case something bad happens, that there is a declared value going in. Whether or not this is better to do through a separate insurance company or the insurance of a shipping provider, I don't know how you want to do it, but you have to do it. You have to have everything in place just in case something goes wrong. It's a pack a parachute because if the plane is going down, you, you got to jump. There's no denying many submitters will be at a loss due to the expected increase of value from the grading and also how this claim has to be calculated as for some they could have sent poor condition cards, so we'll likely get a fair evaluation. But if they were gem mint cards, it will be less fair. So basically, the people that submit the, the, the nicest, the most expensive cards are going to get shafted harder than anyone else, which is, as we'll see, not so bad if, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks and you don't get it all back. Not the end of the world. But if you have thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in a submission, and you're only going to get like 10% of that back. Not necessarily the 10%, but if, if they're valued at 10% of what you um, what you claimed they were or what, what they were to begin with, yeah, that sucks. If they're brand new gem mint cards, they were going to potentially get nines and tens. You're getting, you're getting boned. Losing any amount of cards is unacceptable for any grading service, but unfortunately, it's an inherent risk when sending packages to and from the USA. Well, I would say that it's enough of a risk that you have to have something in place that can make up for this or compensate entirely for, for lost packages or damaged goods, anything along those lines. So, uh, Especially when you're mailing things overseas, Man, you gotta you gotta be really careful. You you almost have to assume that some of it's going to get lost in transit. It's got a long way to travel. There's I don't think there's been a time where there's been more mail theft than now, especially if it's got a huge declared value on it. So, the lost submissions represent only a tiny percentage of total submissions even sent in 2021. Not an excuse. It doesn't matter how small the percentage, how many were shipped successfully. This one's lost. The rest of them don't matter. This one matters. However, this makes the incident no less significant for those involved. Yes, thank you. 
We have done all we can to meet our obligations on the insurance values provided, and I can confirm all affected submitters have now been contacted and offered the claim values. We'll see a little bit, a uh, little, little tricky instance with the, the claim values. I am happy to answer any questions from those affected and also willing to take phone calls, emails at any reasonable time of day. I will also clarify any comments below if any expansion of what I've stated is required. Sadly, with incidents like this, a lot of speculation and rumors are spread. We are fully committed to being transparent with this process, and this whole situation has been a huge burden on myself and the company as a whole, continuously fighting to get the best result. So, no, the fight for the best result was prior to the bad things happening, unfortunately. Unless you have some way of paying out the rest of the total value. Uh, at this point, you're just holding out because you don't want to lose the money. I don't know. It's a lot of money, so I can totally understand if the company or if you personally don't have enough money to actually pay these people back, it would make a lot of sense. So here we go. We are permanently closed for submissions on the Greater Gem website. Uh, okay, so this is probably the uh, the biggest example, the biggest um, problem here. Let's see if I can move myself over a little bit so that we can read the whole thing. All right. So we have a, a group post by Wayne here um, who says, if you use Graded Gem, guys, check on the status of your grading because I had a call today from Connor. They have lost my Feb 2021 sub, 100 cards, around 30 grand worth. They knew in April they were lost, yet only called today. Hundreds of people affected, apparently. 15,000 cards, they didn't insure them properly, I've seen on other posts, and the insurance is not paying out, saying Grid Gem is liable. They have offered me three grand. So three grand on what um, he's saying is like 30 grand, pretty bad. Even you can top that off with 10%, you can top that off with 20%. It's still not going to do it, it's still nowhere close to this. That sucks for someone. They trusted you. And now they're getting shafted for something that was either maybe it was underinsured, maybe it wasn't insured properly. I don't know. But before you start taking on this type of monetary value as a business, you make sure that your insurance is going to cover absolutely everything. You got to make it, I don't know how you make it crystal clear as possible with the insurance provider, whether or not you went through that. It needs to be done. You need to have a way to pay these people back if something bad happens. Doesn't look like enough work was done on the front end. Maybe it got out of control. Maybe it was small submissions at first, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know, the additional work or setup in terms of insurance and everything else wasn't done. Who knows? So here we go. We have some uh, some emails here for the claims. This one to Adam. Firstly, we would like to apologize about the delay in communication from Graded Gem. Unfortunately, in mid-April 2021, a package was confirmed missing by FedEx in the Memphis Distribution Center, and this package contained your submission of 80 cards. I really do appreciate that this was a long time ago. However, over the past eight months, we have been battling with our insurance provider to make a payout for the submission, and it has been an uphill struggle to get the insurance to make any contribution as, the, as they claim Greta Gem to be the, a Bailey on legal grounds of ownership and responsibility. We finally reached a partial settlement within the past month. After careful consideration, Greta Gem has decided to put an extra 10% of the claim values as gratuity. So, more of the same. Uh, lines up with what they're saying, but it's just, I don't think, uh, it's it's a terrible outcome for everyone involved. Terrible for Graded Jam because they look like the bad guy because they didn't set things up properly beforehand. Terrible for the customers who are potentially out a lot of money. I don't know. So here we have some more posts. Um, here, where GG are clearly at fault. I'm not personally blaming them. I mean... It's kind, kind, it's kind of not necessarily blaming them for malpractice or like that they had the full intention of um, screwing people like this, 
but definitely at fault of not setting up a safety net beforehand, uh, the required safety net when dealing with this much uh, value. So here we have another another email from Connor. Um, this one here, uh, as you see at the at the end here, by sending your details, you accept the claim. So trying to get themselves out of legal trouble here probably uh, by having people submit the claim rather than some sort of class action lawsuit that could potentially happen, uh, basically signing away their, their rights to, to any additional value or any um, reason for going after more money in the future. Pretty common practice. Take the, take the money uh, and accept the fact that we're not going to give you the full value. So here we have the graded gem insurance policy here. Items sent to PSA and being returned from PSA are insured for max value per parcel up to 75000 Graded gem, to their best efforts, will ensure parcels are always under this maximum declared value. This provider... This provides cover for theft, loss, damage of the items, including full or partial stolen goods, items going missing, and damages such as accidental damage, impact, fire, water damage, etc. All items are sent by and received via FedEx Express. Items are insured for ungraded value on the way to PSA and for their graded value upon return from PSA, up to the max value per parcel and up to a maximum of 1000 per card. Upon any potential claim, market price is used via eBay sold listings. If no sold listing, then it would be required for the submitter to have the receipt of their. So the problem here is even within this, if we don't want to get into uh, the fact that the insurance wasn't set up properly um, from the get-go, this, um, where it's saying eBay sold listings, great. That's a great way to determine the value, the current mar market value of a card, or even if you want to go back to the time of, you know, if it was eight months ago, that's probably what you want to deal with, what you want to use sometime in around that time frame. Some cards are a little bit more difficult to actually get that value, uh, but this is fine and all, but you can't go off all conditions. If the person isn't, there should be something noted when the card is being submit on, in terms of the value. Uh, what the expected grade is, or at least some sort of condition, like if it's mint, near mint, whatever. Um, so you can't go off recent eBay sold listings if you're going to go take cards that are bent in half versus someone submits something that's gem mint that has a potential for getting a PSA 10. It's not the same. I don't know how you would structure this, but better than the way that it's structured in the, the write-up here because as we can see, it can get lost before it's graded. Better, obviously, if uh, in terms of finding values or, or finding market value, if it was graded and lost on the way back, at least then uh, you have a direct comparison rather than uh, having to use the condition of everything. So I don't know. I think that's where a large value um, or a large uh, amount of the value is kind of lost here and not being um, insured, I suppose. But again, this it's got to be all the. It's like, it, <laughs> man, set it up properly. People like all these pop up grading companies, middlemen, everything else. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. The customers don't know what they're getting themselves into either. This is a great example. This isn't like a tiny pop up middleman service. This is. This is serious business. This is a lot of money. Yes, it's Pokemon cards and sports cards and everything like that. But there's a ton of risk here. And you have to minimize that risk or at least be able to, you know, throw a blanket over it when it catches fire. That's it. All right. Let's see here. So here's mostly just them. Um, saying why they didn't uh, contact people prior to um, because they didn't want to create panic or anything like that. I don't know. Maybe that's the thing to do. I think even this it, it can all just be avoided to begin with. All you have to do is make sure everything's in place, that you have a safety net, you have everything ready to go. Even, even 
I mean, in the ideal world, you would have the, the total amount of funds on hand that you could, once it's lost, you could return that value to the customers and then you fight with the insurance company so they don't have to deal with it. That's kind of part of your role as a middleman is to deal with the, the stuff that people don't want to by submitting on their own. And if you're not doing that, then why are they giving you the cards beforehand? Um, short of if they only wanted to submit a couple. But if they wanted to do that, maybe they just have a group of friends that they know and trust in real life, and they send them together and make their own account. But that's just me. I don't know. So here we go. We have a, a much lesser value example here, um, which is not as big of a hit. Um, but at the same time, this person, sure, they didn't get boned for tens of thousands of dollars, but they have to keep in mind that people did. And sure, like if you got like 300 in raw value and you're only getting 66 back plus 10%, not the end of the world, but what if you had a bigger submission? You, like you just lucked in that, uh, that it was it was lower. So you should still be mad. You should be mad for the other people. You should be mad that this could have happened to you. They throw a zero on there, throw a couple zeros on there. How would you feel? Uh, all right. So then we get into the the ace grading stuff, uh, and we'll we'll call it there. There's a lot of this that uh, we don't know the entire story, but uh, here we have uh, their their graded gem update video from July 2021. Um, just basically talking about how their relationship with PSA has broken down. We don't know why that is exactly. Maybe they were fighting with them. Again, just speculation. Maybe they were fighting about the, the, the submission that went to them. They were hoping that PSA would pay for it. Maybe they were hoping for the insurance to pay for it. Maybe they were hoping that FedEx would pay for it. Who knows? Um, basically, uh, that at this point in time, they were only handling customer returns before shutting down uh, as we see that they are now. Um, but um, then uh, shortly after partnered with uh, Randolph to form Ace Grading, uh, which is a, a UK competitor. So I don't know, is that how you leave the, you know, the middleman PSA service and then go form something else with someone uh, with another grading company? I don't know. It uh, kind of looks, then it looks bad uh, on Gridded Gem and it looks bad on Ace Grading because you, you didn't make it right for your customers before you shut down and, and took off to do something else. So I know, I know it's, um, dev, I don't, I don't think any of it was intentional. I don't think it was necessarily, they had bad intentions. They had anything that they were planning on like, okay, if it gets lost, then we'll just screw everyone over. But that's kind of what end up ends up happening when you're not careful beforehand. So guys, if you're doing anything like this, be extremely careful, put every safety measure in place beforehand. So nothing like this happens. It's only a matter of time. If you're sending that many parcels overseas that one gets lost. So just have everything in place, everything you can possibly have in place, everything that you need, to fully compensate your customers. Otherwise, they're going to get mad. And, you yeah, know, you can't, can't really blame them for that. All right, guys, take care. Join the Discord. See you next time.